Last time on Comic Tropes. You become a partner at Image. You're the only guy that, like, you know, wasn't there, like, you know, at the founding. That they, they, they yep. I guess, invite you to be a partner. Um, how were you approached about that? While I was doing Hollis Town McFarlane, I was very upset with Marvel Comics. Um, did not like them. Uh, That's so fun. Too many details. And now the conclusion. I just, yeah, I didn't have a good time. You never time really have like, explained was... what you were so upset about. I mean, you can keep it to yourself because I don't want to. But is it anything? Oh, it was just. It was very. It, so it was very. Ri- no, it was just. It was very restrictive. I mean, I have a great relationship. I think with Tom Brevoort. I think he was a fantastic editor. I loved working with him. Uh, it's just like, uh, I don't know. I mean, Joe Casada and I do not get along. There were a lot of things that I got blamed for that didn't really happen. And I would explain like, that's not what I meant by that. Like, what are you talking about? And then they'd get more <laughs> mad at me. Um, and then I would get mad because like a comic book would come out with a word balloon on the cover. And I'd be like, why would you put a word balloon on the cover of my book without like telling me or running it by me or letting me write the dialogue or I don't know, God forbid, letting me do the word balloon. Like this is a bad looking word balloon. I don't like this dialogue. I would have taken my time to like do this right. Like, I don't know why you guys wouldn't just let me uh, do this. And then it got to a point where, uh, uh, you know, like they wouldn't promote some of my books because, you know, some of my books were to lower tier books and, you know, there's a marketing budget. They can only, you know, it makes more sense to market the books that are actually going to make revenue as opposed to the books that are not going to make a lot of revenue. Which is going to be, and, and that's the other thing. Like I was completely, like you know, realistic about my my stature or lack thereof at Marvel when I was there. But then I would do things where I'd be like, well, let me set up some interviews where I'll promote this and I'll do this, and that just drove them nuts. You can't do that. You can't talk to people without our permission. And I don't know what you're saying in these interviews. And I'm like, like what do you like? Talk to the outlet. Like like what do you what do you want? Like you want me to just like do these books and not try to sell them? Like I don't understand. And right. so there was a, and, and look, the, the, the fact of the matter is I was a self publisher who had gone to work at image and image is a very free environment. If you've done self publishing image is the absolute best like place to be because you're capable of doing everything, but image is capable said that of handling stuff before anything you, even you don't want to handle. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so then I go to Marvel and I'm like, I can do all this stuff. I can handle all this stuff. I'm willing to handle all this stuff. I'm willing to help out. And it was just not a good fit. Like they just, they they read that as arrogance. Like, well, I'm better than them and I can do this. And it's like, no, I just, I care about the books more than a lot of writers care about the books. I care about all aspects of the books. Yeah. Um, I got into a big fight one time. I'll tell this story uh, because we were planning a, uh, an ultimate crossover. And uh, at the time, you know, Brian had been doing Ultimate X Men, and Mar- uh, Brian Bendis and Mark Miller had been doing. Ult- uh, sorry, Brian had been doing Ultimate Spider Man. Mark Miller had been doing Ultimate X Men, and right. there were a lot of random miniseries that had happened in the Ultimate line, but it was all very contained collection wise. So, Ultimate Six was a book that Brian Bendis and Trevor Hairseen had done. That was a crossover with uh, Spider Man and the Sinister Six, and it was like a separate book. That right. was collected as a trade paperback, but when it was collected as a hardcover, it was collected in the Ultimate Spider-Man hardcover line. Mark Miller had done a crossover called Ultimate War, and that was drawn by uh, Chris Pachalo. Mm-hmm. And when that was collected, that was collected in the Ultimate X-Men hardcover line. And so what that means is Ultimate War was a Spider-Man-centric event that was collected with Spider-Man hardcovers, and Ultimate War was an X-Men related event that was collected in X-Men hardcovers. So as a writer, if you're writing Ultimate War, you're not going to write a very important Spider-Man scene that is continuity heavy, that is going to be a missing piece when you read through the X-Men hardcover, or the, it, the Spider-Man hardcovers, trying to get all this straight. Yeah. And when you're writing Ultimate Six, you're not going to do a big X-Men scene that's going to be missing when you read the X-Men hardcovers. Right. So we're planning this Ultimate event And I say, is this going to be an X-Men leaning event? Is this going to be a Spider-Man leading event? Like what is the like way that this, you know, like, like leans so that I know, like, I've got this big story I'm building with Nightcrawler. I'm not going to touch on it in this event. 
because this event is going to be collected in Spider-Man hardcovers. Like it's a very, like I thought like basic question. I get it. And Joe, and Joe Casada writes me this email back. That's like, why don't you worry about the story before you worry about your X-Men royalties? Like who Ooh. cares about where a book is collected and who's getting the royalties from that story? Like, why don't you just focus on the writing? What's wrong with you? So and we I thought just, it was just about money that you were kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and my response, I don't think I said this, but my response was like, I'm making nickel and dimes from you assholes. Like, I'm making crazy money, you know, at the time from Invincible and Walking Dead. My collections are doing great. I, I'm, I'm working for nickels over here at Marvel and I get treated like crap and I get yelled at all the time for just trying to like, Wow. put an extra level of care in the books. And so that's really what it got down to. I think they resented the fact that I didn't need them. And it was a, a constant like, uh, you know, problem that, you know, like there were times where uh, there was another book. I'm just gonna tell these stories. This is fun. We're having fun here. This is this is get me in, can't get me in trouble. They can't do anything to me. No, there you're was a another book. image. I won't name the book and I won't name the editor, but it was an editor I hadn't worked with before. And he goes, okay, you're doing this book. I want you to send me an outline. This was a one shot. This was a 22 page one shot. Okay. I had done at this point, 50 different Marvel comics with Tom Brevoort, who again, I love and adore to this day. Great yeah. guy. I told the guys like, look, I've done all these books for Tom Brevoort. I've never done an outline. I don't really like writing outlines. I've got all these books that I'm writing. Do you really need an outline from me? And he says, look, man, we never worked together. I don't really trust you. Uh, I'd really like to see an outline before you write the script. I think it'll make the process a little easier. So I go, okay, okay. look, man, all good. I'll just, can I just write like a paragraph or something? Maybe I'm lazy. I don't know, but I'm negotiating. But so he's like, yeah, just send me like a rough paragraph of like what you're going to do in the issue. Okay. And, uh, and I go, okay, cool. And so I send him like a paragraph that has, let's say it's a single character. Uh, and this character has a very iconic villain that it mostly fights. So if I'm doing a Mr. Fantastic one shot, he's fighting Dr. Doom. Okay. Right. So that's basically Mr. Fantastic does this, blah, 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 fights Dr. Doom, blah, blah, blah. This happens. That's the, out that's the paragraph outline that I sent him. He writes Marvel back style. just, a, just an outline. Yeah. So he writes back, he writes back, uh, sounds great. Go ahead and write it. And so I'm like, cool. So then I go and I write this full 22 page script and I turn it in and it takes like a few days for notes to come in. And, uh, he gives, he sends me notes and he's like, okay. Um, you know, and again, it wasn't a Mr. Fantastic book, but he's like, Mr. Fantastic should use a jump rope instead of a bull whip because we think bull whips are, you know, a little, little, you know, violent, um, you know, this person should say and instead of the, uh, this, this thing should be like this. Maybe this guy could be wearing a red hat instead of a blue hat. Like all these like nonsense notes wow. that are like, sure, fine, I'll fix that. Nope. No, no, no. This is all fine. That's all, all right, fine. All right. The last note, but the last note is, uh, don't use Dr. Doom. The Dr. Whole... Doom is used too often. Uh, uh, use a different villain. And like, I get to that note and I'm like, okay, so I have to rewrite this entire story because it's all about Dr. Doom. I sent you a paragraph that said it was all about Dr. Doom. And that you, was I have an email off. from you that says, go ahead and write it. I've now written it. And you're telling me not to use Dr. Doom. Like it's been a week since you told me to use Dr. Doom. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? And so I'm pissed because I'm like, I got to write this whole fucking thing again. And so I tell him like, look, man, I feel like I shouldn't have to do this because I sent you the outline. You approved the outline. Like, I don't feel comfortable having to write this. You're, you're basically telling me I have to write an entire other script for free. Like, this is ridiculous. And so that pissed them off. Like, if I was another creator, I probably would have been like, okay, I'll go write this thing again, even though what you're doing is unreasonable. But it made me mad that he was like, you know, being completely unreasonable. Like, I, you know, at a certain point, you feel like you have to like take a stand for creators. It's like, you editors shouldn't be treating people like this. So I'm going to fight you on this. And that kind of stuff would happen from time to time. And, you know, to their credit in that, in that instance, I ended up having a, a conference call where the top brass of Marvel was kind of chewing me out over uh, refusing to take notes. And, uh, and I explained to them, guys, this is not a matter of me refusing to take notes. Right. I sent in an outline. Idea. The guy approved the outline. I feel like this note is unreasonable. All I'm doing is calling out that this note is unreasonable. And they were like, 
oh, okay, yeah, that's not how the editor explained that to us. We hadn't really realized that. Uh, okay, we'll fix this. But then like a month passed and all they remembered that I had, all they remember is that I had fought with an editor and then they're like, you're problematic. You fight with editors too much. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I was, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's more than willing to leave as quickly as possible. So when they Amazing offered how me good a the, fit uh, you are at image, I mean, image seems to be like the, the place that, that you feel comfortable doing your, I mean, you've been there for so long at this point too. Well, the hands-on approach at Image is, is welcomed and rewarded as opposed to, you know, like, like to a certain extent, I was basically saying, guys, I don't need an editor. I can do that job. And that's not going to fit at Marvel ever. Um, um, so yeah. That's their style. What are, yeah. what are some of your responsibilities as an Image partner? What kind of stuff do you have to do? Well, I mean, it's, it's I don't know, it's any number of things. I mean, when there's something big going on at the company, um, you know, Eric, it's funny, Eric Stevenson is calling me right now. I'll just call him later. But, uh, um, the, Sorry, uh, Eric. Um, uh, I'll call him back. It's fine. But, uh, um, when there's, when there's something big going on at the company, the partners have to get together and like decide together how to handle it. Okay. Um, so, so that's the kind of thing. Um, you know, I don't necessarily approve books, but every now and then Stevenson will be like, I don't really, you know, know if this is like the right thing to publish. Like, should we publish this? What do you think? I just want to put an extra set of eyes on this. That happens okay. very rarely. You get um, to put in your two cents every once in a while. Yeah. But I mean, you know, if we're, if we're going to change printers or if there's any kind of thing like that happening, like we, we have to kind of circle the wagons and, and uh, figure things out. Um, when there's big decisions to be made as a publishing entity, we all kind of chip at it, I guess is the main thing. Okay. But Skybound is your own imprint within Image, and, and obviously beyond the comics that you write, you obviously publish several other creators under the Skybound imprint, and you produce stuff through Skybound and stuff like that. Sure. I'm very curious, like, what is a typical workday for you? Like, sort of explain to us, like, I'm, I'm serious, like, what time you get up, like, which projects you slot, like, how, what does a work day look like for you these days? I mean, every work day for me is almost completely different. I don't is really it? have like a, oh, I wake up, I mean, I wake up every day at like, uh, you know, 5.30 or so. I get up pretty early. Wow. Um, okay. You know, and uh, uh, you wouldn't know it, but I do a fair bit of exercise just because I don't want to die. Um, but uh, uh, <laughs> I ate a lot of rice. To Big brain. Food. You eat but, a lot of uh, rice? Is that what yeah, you just I said? On, I peck on those carbs. I said I eat a lot of rice to counteract all the exercise I do. <laughs> um, but because uh, uh, I got to keep my womanly figure. But uh, um, but no. So uh, uh, and then you know I start working and 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 every now and then I'll hit the ground running and you know write a bunch of pages of you know some random script that's you know long overdue. Um, <laughs> most of the time I sit down to my computer and I have like a you know number of fires of you know like wait a minute, this letters column was supposed to be done. You need to be doing these responses or, you know, uh, you know, this, this, this script is waiting for approval or, or this, you know, this, this ad needs to be looked at. There's a lot of stuff like that. Um, so you're multitasking then. You're not like, yeah, yeah. you're not just sort of like saying like these three hours, nobody can bother me. This is when I'm writing. Or do you do things like that sometimes? Every, every now and then I'll do that, but that's just sporadic. And most of the time when I do that, I just ignore people. So, you know, like, like being responsible and going, okay, I, anyone who needs to contact me can contact me in the next 10 minutes. If you need to hear from me after that, you're going to have a three hour window where you're not going to be able to get in touch with me. Okay. I feel like that's kind of tedious. I don't need people keeping tabs on me like that. Uh, so, uh, so I'll just be like, well, you know, I was, I was working like three hours later when I finally get back to people. And I really don't like this world that we live in where people text you and then they're like, it's been 30 minutes. Aren't you going to reply to my text? And it's like, I don't need to be on call for everyone at all times. Like who, who agreed to this? Like I am Robert Kirkman. Who do you uh, think you are? That's not what I'm saying. That's I know what I'm saying not. at all. But, uh, but, you're not, do you, but yeah. I'm sure you have people in your life that are like, have you going to get back to my text? And it's like, you texted me 15 minutes ago. Like I was eating a sandwich. I don't know why you're mad at me. But, uh, uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, I have a lot of stuff going on outside of comics. Like there's, uh, I feel like every, you know, day or so I have like some kind of script that needs to be read and approved of uh, from some various project that, you know, some of which I can talk about, some of which I can't. Uh, so I'm constantly doing that stuff. I have ton of, tons of, you know, I, you know, just normal stuff. Like, you know, I've got meetings with Universal and Amazon about different projects that are going on. I talk to yeah. AMC uh, every now and then. 
uh, about, you know, what's going on with Walking Dead and stuff. I, I you know, will talk to Scott Gimple and Angela King and, you know, people that are overseeing that kind of stuff. Um, and I know that like you know, every I'm not day. that involved in casting and things like that anymore. Uh, I used to be a lot more involved than I am now. Now, like, you know, so some, some of the bigger characters, I'll, uh, I'll chime in. But, uh, you know, a lot of, at, at this point, you know, it's like, people have been running that show for as long as they've been running it. And I feel like it would be intrusive for me to be uh, jumping in from time to time. Uh, so I try to stay as hands off on, on uh, things that aren't like, you know, series direction and season direction and things like that. Do you um, feel like you're close to capacity or do you think that like, it, like you could slowly work in like another series that you're writing for a comic or, or produce another no, show? I am, I am always over capacity and I have been, solidly over capacity for like 20 years now. And so uh, and <laughs> even though when I started on Battle Put, my capacity was very small and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm doing too much. And then I start doing more and I'm like, oh my God, I'm doing too much. And then I start doing more and I'm like, oh my God, I'm doing too much. Uh, I feel like now that I'm over 40, I've hit the point where I'm like, nah, it's, it's impossible for me to do more. I need to stop doing projects. And that's of my own, like, that's my own fault. You know, like I'm like, ooh, ooh. Chris Sami's available. I definitely need to be writing an extra comic book. I can totally make time for this. I'm not going to pass up the chance to work with Chris Sami. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm at the point now where I need to be downsizing. So I'm going to try to do like less. And I think, I think my goal for the future is to uh, uh, do fewer projects that are better. I get it. I mean, I think that, 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 that what you're doing is great, but you know, I'm biased, but I, I, I um, I appreciate you sharing sort of like what a, what a work day is like. Do you sort of end at a normal hour so that you've got like family time or something like that? Best advice, best advice I ever got from Larson is uh, uh, he said that uh, creative work takes as much time as you give it. So if you give it eight hours a day, it'll take eight hours a day. If you give it six hours a day, it'll take six hours a day. If you give it 14 hours a day or 16 hours a day, it will take 14 hours a day or 16 hours a day. And you'll never be able to understand how you could ever do it in less time. And so he said, you know, like he wakes up and works banker's hours. He would sit at the desk every day at like eight or nine and five or six every day. He would just put the pencil down and stand up. And he said that uh, when he started doing that, he was getting very little work done because he was used to just working all night until he got pages done. But once his mind and his body acclimated to that six o'clock like stop time, he found himself working more efficiently and getting more done in the time allotted. And so when I was having my first kid, which is now 14 years ago, I cannot believe I have a 14 year old child. Uh, that's, that's when I was talking to him about it. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta start working less because I was working like 16, 17 hours a day consistently. Um, and so, you know, he had that conversation with me and I was like, okay, I guess I'll, I don't know, I guess I'll just try that. And so I'd be like, all right, six yeah. o'clock, I'm, um, I'm out. Like, we'll see how this goes. And it was a disaster for like a month. But then at a certain point I started like figuring out like, oh, maybe watch less YouTube and oh, you know, don't focus on this email too much. And you know, and I'm a bit scatterbrained. There are people that, you know, won't get an email response back from me, no matter how much I intend to write them back, because I'm like, okay, I can't do that right now, because I got to get this done, because I got to be done by six. But I've worked consistently from like, you know, eight to six, unless, you know, like there are times when I'm on set or when I'm like in a writer's room and things go over. But for the most part, I'm working banker's hours. Um, you know, all the time because, you know, I have a wife and kids and I don't want to be completely absent in their lives. And, you know, my family life ultimately is more important to me than my work life. So, uh, uh, you know, I've been fairly successful and I have the luxury of not having to focus on that kind of stuff. But, uh, um, that makes me happy to hear um, that makes me happy to hear that you feel like you've got the time for your family and stuff like that. That that's, yeah. What, what's the yeah, point? So while my day is like a, a, a an insane quilt of oh god, I don't know what I'm doing from minute to minute. Like I'm trying to get stuff done here and there and do different things. You know, I do have a quitting time. I'm only working a certain amount of time. That's great. What about like and every day for lunch? I make it a point to stop and watch an episode of some Star Trek show. <laughs> I thought you were going to say comic tropes and give me like, pay me a compliment. Why did I think you were going to say that? <laughs> Why did I think that? What is that was... comic tropes? What is this thing you're talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about. I can't what believe I sincerely thought you were just about to pay me this huge compliment. And, and I think you just said Star Trek. I was like, right, of course. He loves Star Trek. You there needs to me. be more Star Trek. There needs to be For a more long time, Chris. 
Deep Space Nine, man. That was I have watched that was the, the video pinnacle. channel. It's very good. And I'm here for a reason. 